Hi, welcome to this Estimator Express getting started video. In this video, I shall be taking you through the creation of an estimate. Now, before starting your estimate, it is generally good practice to click on the download prices button to bring down the latest market averages or terms from your preferred supplier. Once done, return to the main menu and click on My Estimates. Now, My Estimates will show you a list of jobs you are currently either working on or have completed or awaiting a customer reply. You can set these statuses when exiting a job or you can set them using the tools up here. Now, as you can see we have a value of successful estimates and a value of current estimates and a list of the jobs themselves down here. Now every job has a name, number, description and also here if we are working on them the costs excluding and including profit and also quite importantly when this job was last opened so we can see how recent they are. To create a new estimate I shall go up to the button at the top here the blue cross new estimate click that and shall come up with our eight step wizard. Now in this wizard it's going to ask for a job name and job description. Now the job name can be anything you prefer to use to classify your jobs. You can either use customer name, what type of job it is, location, whatever uh, you feel would suit your preferences. So in this case I'm going to use customer name and call it Mr. Oliver. And in the description I'm going to call this extension. Now as I'm typing it's already st starting to fill that in for me but I can actually put any name I wish in that job description there as well. It's already issued me with a job number. And if I'm using Plans Express, I can also bring in the drawing I wish to import at this point as well by clicking on this button. As we're doing this 100% within Estimator Express, I'm just going to move on and click Next. Now on step two, it's going to ask me for the price book. Now the software comes with a master price book, just the one, and that contains all of our prices. And if you have any merchant links, all those prices as well will appear in the master price book. You do have options to create secondary price books, but everything that's kept tracked is in the master price book, and I highly recommend any custom materials to be created in there as well. It keeps it all in one place, nice and tidy, and easy to access. On the next page, we have an option here to select a specification. Now for this job it's an extension so I'm going to go to this drop down box here and I'm going to select a extension specification. Now this will give me access to mini diggers and skips to remove the waste. If I was to go for a new build, such as either the new build there or the new build part L updated specification, it will give me options for JCBs and tippers to remove the waste. In here we as well have options for renovation which extends the time for labor to do certain tasks as well as timber frame specs in there as well. Now I'm going to go to an extension specification for this job. Now I also have a few extra options at this point in the form of the mini specs here, the mini specifications. Now I can see I have a roof tiling spec specification here so I can go either same as specification so what's default or I can go to the drop down list and select for this job I can go for a plain tile for new build or plain tile for extension and renovation which actually extend the labour time for that task or I can go for pan tile, for new build extension or even a slate and you can build upon these mini specifications as well to create a larger list of different resources if you wish but it just makes swapping that resource type across the whole job much quicker and much easier. So for this I'm going to go for a plain tile for extension or renovation and the external brickwork here I'm going to say same as specification and leave that as default but to give you an idea what that can do I can select from a different price brick for new build and going down this list I can also see that there is going to be an option there for extension or renovation to increase the labour time for actually fitting those bricks. So basically building your brick wall is going to take a little bit longer on extension and renovation, possibly due to access or 
any other issues and of course we come down here now we get to a reclaimed brick as well that's quite important because there's even increased labor time for that as you may have to clean the bricks themselves but for this I'm going to go same with specification I'm going to click next and this will give me my group of workbooks now the group of workbooks is the most commonly countered jobs for a certain task so if I go here now I can see here now I have a house, bungalow, renovation, apartments and such there, and also extensions. Now for this job I'm going to be doing an apex valley roof extension, but I'm going to use a lean to extension group just for this uh, example here, so we can add workbooks later on. If I need to add any other workbooks specifically I can also filter this in here now and it will filter through and find me the workbooks I need to add. I'm not going to add them at this point, I'll add them in another video. At this point now I'm going to click next and it will give me options there for the start date of the job and also chart type. So I'm going to set the start date of the job say 27th of April. I can always go back and change this and also the Gantt chart to be brought in for this task. So I'm going to go to small extension. Click next, customer details. So for this I'm going to go for Mr. Oliver, address there, that's number one. Street, area, city, postcode there. I'm going to go AB12CD. I'll leave the telephone number out for now. Now, if you don't put the customer details at this point, you can always return to that at a later date as they will be requested for producing the quote at the end. Step 7 gives us our profit markups. Now, as you can see there, there is a 30% markup for labour and plant, 30% for material, 30% for subcontract and sundry. You can adjust these now or you can return at a later date again and adjust these, but this is where your so not just profit markup exists but the company running costs as well so as the software is estimating for everything as down to the cost of what it's going to cost you to do the build this is where everything comes on top click next and then we go to inflation rates as well now these are particularly useful if you are in a longer project so after a certain time period the cost of the materials are presumed to go up by a certain percentage as well as say plant, material, subcontract and sundry. Also if you are estimating for a job further down the line or as an example you are estimating in November for a job that's to start in the new year you know that generally new year material price increases kick in and you can account for that at this point as well. Of course you can always return to this at a later date and it gives you an option when producing the quote to include the inflation or not. Once done we can click finish and now that information we've inputted will be gathered together and the software will create our estimate ready for us to proceed 